Welcome, weary traveller. We've got another battle report for you. Uh, it's Kador versus Signar. So here's the lists. Signar Okay, so I've got Haley and in her. Uh, Haley, I hate Haley. Haley, too, in her battle, battle group is Thorn and Stormwall. I've uh, got okay. a Journeyman Warcaster, Black 13th, and uh, the Gun Mages, but without the UA. And that's 35 points. So, this is a 35 point Kador list led by E Sorsha, bonded to Bisto 9, together with 10 Winter Guard with 3 Rocketeers, the UA, and Kovnik Joe. Uh, Sorsha is also accompanied by Reinhold and Silas. And then on my right flank we have a unit of Doomweavers with the UA, four Widowmakers and uh, Epic Iris. Okay, so uh, here's you setting up, because you just decided to go first. And there's me setting up. Do you want to talk about your list a little bit? Yeah, so the core of my list is uh, the Winter Guard Infantry Death Star, as, uh, as people all love it. Oh no, yeah. I love it, uh, which I just deployed uh, right in the center in front of these of the zones. And you now see me deploying my advanced deploy unit, which is the Widowmakers in the forest, yeah. as well as my Doomies in on the flank. And the Doomies and up there. on the other side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the Doomies up there turned out to be really uh, key, uh, key strategy. Uh, because of what I've got is such a small amount, but I was prepared to deal with what you were sending at me, except... Uh, not if it all arrived at the same time, which is what's going to happen. Exactly. So uh, I'm playing my uh, a sort of a pared down. It's a 35 point game, so I'm playing a pared down version of my Haley list, uh, which doesn't really have any close combat. And your list is pretty, apart from the Winter Guard, is pretty heavily close combat, I guess. Yeah, I was pretty comfortable going in because I figured that. I, I didn't know what the storm wall could do, but everything else I didn't really feel would out attrition me too well. I, yeah. I didn't know how much damage you could actually inflict on me before I really got in range to do some damage to you. Yeah. Uh, especially with this this flank setup where you had to sort of dedicate some resources to to dealing with them, uh, I felt pretty comfortable just moving up my force and um, and taking some damage on the way in. Yeah, and those hills really helped you out because if they hadn't been there, then on the top right of the board there. Then I would have been able to shoot you to pe your Doom Reavers to pieces probably before everything else arrived. Um, so my whole idea was to play keep away to try and shoot you and stop you from charging me and try and keep you at about ten inches out, and then I'd just be able to pick off models because uh, Haley's got the Dead Eye spell, which is great for gun mages against your Defense Seventeen Winter Guard, which is a the Winter Guard are really annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. Um Every turn, basically going forward, I'm just doing the same old, same old with the Winter Guards of Buffon weaving up, using Iron Flesh to give them higher defense and uh, giving them tough. So you'll see me putting down some markers. It's basically the same thing every single turn. Yeah. Uh, also, I think right now what's what's also going on, what's kind of important, is uh, my Widowmakers take out some some models. So some gun mages, I think, are shut down. And I think more importantly, I took one of those uh, important pieces out of your Black Thirteenth unit, right? Yeah. Took out Ryan, which is the one with the Mage Storm. So I got one Mage Storm template down, and that was it in the whole game. And she's so important. I mean, it's only a cheap unit. It's only four points. Uh, but that Mage Storm, you kind of end up using it as a bit of a crutch because it's so great. Uh, especially against something like Doom Reavers because they want to charge directly at you. So if you whack a great big uh, 12 damage template in front of them, then it makes it much more difficult for them to do anything. Yeah, uh, but and those templates are really annoying. So you see, yeah. you see those three templates are right there, and of course the little uh, thing that the stormwall puts down, and it really cramped my style. I I, I didn't play against this before, yeah. and it was really annoying. But I still, like I said, managed to kill off that one guy. Yeah. Um, and I think now I make the mistake of putting the Doom Reavers too close to my Widowmaker, so they are actually now um, how do you call this? Um, they all they flee or that's right. Yeah, do it. that yeah. was an unlucky roll actually. In fact, yeah, so if, was, if you hadn't have done that, that you probably would have won a bit quicker. Uh, that's just a bit yeah. of a spoiler already. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so here you see me t hopelessly trying to get around all of those AOEs, trying to at least close yeah. in on a distance and uh, and not take too many turns of shooting on the way in. Well, the thing but with, as you can see, it is really dictating movement at this point. Yeah, yeah. And the thing with Doom Reavers is you can still run them around the templates and they run, what, 12 inches? And then they've got reach. So they're 14 yeah. inches... You know, even if you've got a, a little template in front of them, they can still just run around and engage you. And it forces you to, especially with a shooting list, you're know, forced to have to deal with them. Uh, otherwise, one or two of them could take down probably, uh, on, certainly on Sorsha's feet turn, one or two of them could probably take down the uh, storm wall or at least uh, cripple it and make it useless. Yeah. Um, uh, so w what about Sorsha? Are you enjoying using her as a caster? Um, uh, right now, I think because of the matchup that we tend to play, she's not as uh, of a utility piece as I as I would like. Um, so I don't really get to use freezing grip all that much because of um, you know gun mages outranging freezing grip, grip uh, gun mage strike force, and also uh, overrunning uh, war jacks on the quick side of things. So it, it's it's a bit hard to get the most out of our entire spell list. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but she's still very strong with 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 the build, considering of iron iron flash and being able to just move away with cyclone. Uh, so she's still useful, I just still have to learn to use her a bit better and really get the most out of her spells. And I think um, uh, the, the uh, elite cadre for the Winter Guard actually helped you to pick off uh, the rest of the gun mages. Uh, so the Winter Guard yeah. aren't, aren't that great at shooting, they've got that combined ranged attack which is okay um, against low def stuff, but the gun mages are def 15 and then that allowed you to re-roll any hit, any misses. You were able to re-roll, and that's pretty much. Yeah, that's so good. You just combine it with maybe just two two guys, and you re-roll. It's very very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think and here at, at at the top, uh, I ran the Doom, Doom Reavers to engage your your gun mages. Yeah. And I think that I expected that to go a little better, but your gun mages actually weren't that bad in 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 melee, no? Yeah, they, well, they've got gunfighters, so they they're just exactly the same in melee as they are. Um, Shooting, except I'm, I'm not. When they're in melee, I can't. I can't use the special ammunition that they've got. Um, but yeah, apart from that, they're pretty good, and they can actually shoot into melee as well. So um, they don't get a penalty for uh, for that. And I think I used yeah. that. Um, I think when Thorn was engaged, maybe I can't remember. Um, so at this point, I've lost the that one uh, Black Thirteenth that Ryan with the nice template, and the other two are mm. tied up with the Doom Reavers. So I really suffered with model count on this one. So you got, it's 35 points, so I think I had like 15 models, and I think you had double that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. there's not really, I, I if I had the storm, if the storm wall wasn't occupied with the doom reavers for the first two turns, then I could have used the storm wall to stop your winter guard. Um, but that was yeah, the, do a that bit was of the thing. Yeah, damage. Yeah, I mean, I've got a limited number of models and you forced me to split my firepower. And that's it, That's I think that was the key to winning really. Yeah, and here I think this was an important move, right? On on the, the bad side of things, where you moved your stormwall, oh, even yeah. though you didn't have to move him. Yep. And this put him in charge range of my uh, boundless charged uh, beast on nine. That's right. I was a bit, I was a bit confident. I was felt confident that the black thirteenth were dealing with the doom reavers, so I felt like I had to try and use the stormwall to kill the beast. Uh, and then I just moved him into charge range, which was a bit stupid, really. I could have time bombed him with Haley and stopped him from charging. There's any number of things I could have done, and I think that was a big mistake because he one turned uh, the storm wall. Yeah, uh, that's a crazy amount of damage. So four focus. Oh, no, of I the think bomb. he had five boxes left. I think the Widowmakers did did the last little bit of damage. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that's that's yeah potato potato. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I think the storm wall's got approaching 60 boxes and you yeah took out all but i think maybe 55 boxes and you took out all but five yeah. uh and it was the sorcerer's feet combined with four focus on beast um is just crazy yeah uh, what was your plan going into the game in terms of dealing with the with the winter guard knowing how what, how well they can jam and the templates. just kind of annoy you generally. So I've got Deadeye, which would mean that my gun mages could hit Winter Guard on average rolls. And mm -hmm. uh, so I was using Deadeye an awful lot. I was relying on that a lot. And um, I was also hoping that you would move Sorcerer up a bit closer. But you've been, I think you've learned, I think you've played a lot of games where she's been assassinated. And I think <laughs> yes. you've learned to be extremely cautious. And that paid off actually because um, the Stormwall uh, has got a couple of guns and Haley can give him an extra shot 
and uh, there, it, there it goes. Um, yeah. And then I can give it dead eye, and that means I probably, if you hadn't have guarded her so well, I would have been looking to just pick her off from a distance with the storm wall. Uh, it's kind of a, like a surprise assassination that you can do. It's really, really nasty against medium-based casters because they uh, are much harder to screen. Yeah. So, for example, if you've been using Butcher, then the Stormwall shooting him would have been be much, my... much harder. Yeah. 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 Also, but... as, you, as you can see here, uh, neither of us is really playing for the objectives at all. That would, I think just we're just too busy kind of countering each other yeah. to really focus on anything at this point. Yeah. So the Stormwall's gone, so I'm, I'm totally on the back foot. And I think the game's decided... Uh, if it wasn't already decided uh, in the second turn, then it certainly is now. So yeah. I've got uh, and Haley was kind of just ramboing uh, for the last. I think we played like three turns after the storm all went. Haley was yeah, just. But rolling you still had a little sneaky plan at this point in the game, right? So you still have Thorin left, and you still yeah. you had the plan to still win an assassination. It wasn't a big chance, but you still had something in mind here. That's right. Yeah. So Thorn's standing there, and the Winter Guard can't really do a lot against him in close combat. I think they sort of took about half of his health away uh, over the course of the game, and he can with Haley. He can still uh, cast spells as an Arc Node while she while he's engaged. Um, so I was really just looking for that single line of sight. To because Haley's um, got a very good uh, focus eight, so hitting with spells isn't too much of a problem. And I was just looking for that line of sight just to take, pick Sorsha off with a couple of spells. Uh, it's quite a nasty uh, another. It's another assassination vector um, that's available. So yeah, and here you actually managed to take out the Winter Guard in the middle despite yeah it was uh, masking high defense. And I think then next you also take out Reinhold that was screening Sorsha. We did actually open up that little um, line of sight that you needed, no? I did. I, I think I, that's didn't I time bomb? Well, I used time bomb, I think, and then I think yeah. that took out uh, Reinhold. But I don't think it was a direct hit, was it? I can't remember because Reinhold's got crazy high defense, so I think it was he's as high or or about the same uh, defense as yeah, the Winter Guard. Sixteen, yeah. But um, playing the Winter Guard at unit attachment far back and Kovnik Joe is far back, so there's um, obviously if Sorsha dies, then that's the end of the game. So it's very hard to take take down that um, defense. Yeah. Oh yeah, here the I think we ran out of um, memory on, on the video camera, so it kind of jumped. Um, but the assassination yeah. failed. Uh, the assassination attempt failed, so I moved Sorsha back all the way because I have really nothing with her to do so far up front, just to make yeah. sure. I don't lose her at this point. Yeah. And um, because you are out of options, pretty much you decided to go for the scenario. Right? Yeah. So I'm 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 using the dead storm wall to stop Beast from charging Haley, and then um, you're having to use the remainder of your Winter Guard. And I think I think Haley took out the the Widow Makers. Yeah. So okay. you've basically got Beast and the Winter Guard to to force me to give up the game. Uh, and I, I was, a, <laughs> I just wouldn't quit, so I just carried on. I think the game was, yeah, I'm pretty sure the game's decided at this point. I couldn't really score on scenario, uh, so it was just a matter of time before you put me in a position where I couldn't possibly win. Yeah, um, but it was an interesting exercise to see what a caster and um, I think one of your B13s uh, could still do to me. I mean, you took out a couple of winter guards still. You took out the widowmakers at two or three. Yeah. Um, so in this situation, I could run away from the beast. Just, you know, I was fast enough just to keep him just out of reach, and I had there was enough um, immobile models on the table to keep between me and him, and then the winter guard I was taking out maybe one or two a turn, but there's just too many of them, and uh, you were able to uh, put them on the objective and score some points, and then I think Sorsha was coming in for the lower flag as well. Yeah, uh, I was very scared. Yeah, <laughs> I think the first game you and I ever played, I I won by assassinating you with Kane. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and you play a lot against uh, Morton Eberlist, which is uh, good as, uh, with uh, Death Jack, and he's always got looking for vectors for assassination. Yeah. Uh, so you play. I mean, Sorcia is almost off the board at this point. I think at one point the where the um, scatter template is at the moment. I think at one point she was all the way over there. Yeah, um, exactly. So and and I, I can allocate any focus to Beast, even though I wanted to get to grips with your caster, but yeah. because Beast runs for free, I can still move up close and uh, and try to get you in melee range. Yeah. So I don't, didn't really need that focus from her, and I didn't want to risk it at this point. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's it, really. Uh, so I didn't manage to weaken the Winter Guard enough to make to give me enough of a chance to, to finish the game with just with Haley on her own. 
So that was that yeah. really. So I think if we played this again, um, I probably wouldn't have chosen that table edge because I would have needed the space on the other table edge. Uh, mm. And I probably, I would probably want to go first. So if I didn't choose the table edge, then I would want the first turn. Um, because I need that space to, to move out of the way of the Doom Reavers, really. Because I could have walked the whole army in a group, sort of gradually away from the Doom Reavers, and that would have bought me an extra turn of shooting them, and that might have made a big difference. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And I need to be a little bit less, uh, a, bit, a bit more cautious with uh, Ryan, because she's, in this matchup anyway, she's so useful. Uh, she could have been taking out Winterguard every turn. And she didn't get a chance to do that, so I need to m possibly sacrifice her first turn of shooting just to keep her safe in the future. Yeah. Um, do you ever um, keep that in mind in terms of positioning with B13s? Does it influence sort of how you play them, considering they all have different abilities? Yes. Yeah. So that's the problem is that Ryan's got clearly the most aggressive ability. Uh, the uh, I can't remember what the other guys' names are. Uh, one of them allows you to see through stealth, which is very useful against retribution. Uh, mm -hmm. or cricks, and then the final guy gives them stealth if they happen to be standing in a forest. Okay, that's the end of the game. Um, if they happen to be at the end of the forest. So he, uh, those two guys tend to hang around the back and Ryan's always up the front shooting. Uh, because What's his range on the uh, Mage Storm? It's always 10 inches. Because if you use their special abilities, then you're not using the special ammo that they get. Um, so snipe, you can't use snipe and Mage Storm, which is a shame, <laughs> but I think it would be just a bit too ridiculous. So you could essentially shoot from 10 inches away, but then give the unit stealth to protect them. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You could do, mm -hmm. yeah. Again, there's no forest on this side, on my side of the table in this case. So, Oh, they could get stealth by standing behind the wall, so that might have been a, a nice uh, idea. I think in this game, if I had deployed the Black 13th on the side with the house, and the gun mages on the side with a the hill, then things might have gone quite differently as well. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah because uh, I think the Black 13th would have done a lot against the Winter Guard. Yeah, it's just so useful that, that Doom Reavers and Widowmakers have advanced deploy, especially for Doom Reavers being so vulnerable to shooting yeah. um, or certain matchups in general, just being able to put them on the other side if needed is very, very useful. Yeah, and those uh, Widowmakers are great, uh, especially just for finishing off heavies, just getting those last two boxes. And then otherwise, they're just picking off uh, single wound infantry just as, as they wish, really. Yeah. Really nice. So I guess the forest was quite a nice position for them because they could just sit on the edge of it. Yeah, that was a nice one. Cool. All right, well, thanks very much, man. And uh, sure. yeah, that was a good game and I'm looking forward to uh, maybe winning our next game. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to it. Cool.